Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and in this video we are gonna talk about INFJ subtypes. The four INFJ subtypes, yes, the INFJ is a lot more varied, a lot more dynamic than its stereotypes portray. Obviously, because this is the rarest type, people are the strictest about this type. If you are an INFJ, you have to abide by this and this and this rule. There are so many rules and there are so many people out there to please and tell you whether you're an INFJ or not. And it's frankly ridiculous. There, to, to be honest, there are many INFJ out there who do not identify with INFJ despite the fact that they should identify with an INFJ because they are INFJ. There are INTPs out there that are actually INFJ because people overly mystify introverted intuition. There are people out there who are ENFP or ENTP who should actually be INFJ because they are philosophically oriented, they are theory oriented, they are not detectives, they do not use extroverted intuition, they use introverted intuition. Now, here are the four subtypes with no further introduction. First of all, the philosopher. The philosopher storyteller. INFJs at their best are people who love to communicate and share their theories and visions for the world. Introverted intuition is about running theories and theoretical models on patterns and things and seeing how things will change over the long term. Running a simulation inside your own head about how the world might change or how you might transform over the days, over the years. You can use this model to do all kinds of things. I call it cooking because what it really is is uh, letting things process and simmer for a while unconsciously until you figured out the answer. This process is quite logical. It requires a lot of logical and theoretical thinking. It is not purely a mystical function as it has been portrayed. Now this is a subjective function and here is where the misconception is. The idea is that subjective somehow makes it mystical or mysterious in its nature. Well really subjective means it's a little more complex, it requires more processing and is a little more deep and it's sometimes harder to uh, find the objective truth behind the statements. Now, INFJs are spokespersons for their ideals. At their best, they naturally connect to their audience and to the people around them. They love to be and connect with people, to feel a, like a part of the world, to f act as if they are guided by some greater form of justice, some greater system, some greater idea of karma or justice or morality. INFJs need to feel like they are guided by a higher moral philosophy, not just individual personal subjective belief or opinion, but something bigger. Uh, so an INFJ in their second pattern is an INFJ who still has this moral belief, which they cling on to hardly. Uh, they use extroverted feelings still in this second subtype, but they are starting to compromise introverted intuition, and that is what gives rise to, rise to Mr. Smooth. Because introvert intuition sometimes is a secretive function and a function that requires you to de detach and to pull away from other people and from the world, this is a function that often is more silent, quiet and hard, easier to miss. Because of this, if an INFJ desires to be in the spotlight, they come to use extroverted sensing. They come to exaggerate their message, they come to speak louder about something they know little about, they come to hy create hyperboles, they come to be more crude, they come to be more loud, visual, visceral, uh, tangible, concrete. They become more practical oriented, extroverted sensing oriented, they become more hedonistic, more about enjoying the moment, more about letting loose and just going with the, with the flow and with the situation. INFJs so often fall into this subtype and because INFJs are portrayed to be so introverted, INFJs in this subtype are hardly recognized as INFJs. More often, these extroverted feeling and extroverted sensing INFJs appear more like intuitive ESFJs or ENFPs or ENTPs if you may. So INFJs can also fall into a third subtype 
But first, before I speak about this, I will say the second subtype is related to stress. Yes, being in this second subtype puts an INFJ under stress and pressure. The more you develop these functions, the better you can handle this stress, but overall, this is not an INFJ's core preference. So an INFJ can only keep up this up for a certain amount of time. These INFJs still often find no need to retreat back to themselves to actually deal with the situation. And unlike real ESFJs, these extroverted feeling, extroverted sensing INFJs do not have the same functional preferences and they appear more stressed, more tense, and they appear more controlled in their use of extroverted feeling. And this is because extroverted feeling isn't an INFJ's passion. It's their higher awareness. It's their route to growth. It's something they use with a lot more control and direction than an ESFJ would. Thirdly, overall, an INFJ can fall into the introverted thinking subtype. And in this introverted thinking subtype, they still regain their introverted intuitive passion, but they've stopped acting towards a higher goal. They've stopped listening to their higher awareness. They've decided that, fuck it, I don't care, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And so, in the fear of responsibility, they're third function, often related to the child or the sidekick inside of you, INFJs are beginning to pursue relief, relaxation and hobbies. These INFJs using introverted thinking are more scientifically oriented. They can be great scientists, they can be great theorists. The problem is introverted thinking is overall an immature function for an INFJ. INTPs use introverted thinking with wisdom as a passion. They love to do it, but an INFJ only has a knack for introverted thinking in a very select specific area. INFJs are also a little more critical in how they use introverted thinking. They're more lazy in how they use it. They take more shortcuts and overall they are less and they are more narrow-minded. INFJs with introverted thinking appear extremely narrow-minded to others. They are often very hard to get through because introverted thinking is immaturely blocking out any inconvenient information, anything that could possibly stress them. Still, these INFJs can be great critical thinkers, people like uh, Richard Dawkins or the people that speak out and question problems and spiritual beliefs and things that are stupid in their eyes, of course. This is a relative thing for some. Anyways, INFJs also have a final fourth subtype and this is what it's like to be in the grip for an INFJ. An INFJ in the grip falls into extroverted sensing and introverted thinking to the point where they experience anxiety and stress at the same time. You could call this a form of depression if it becomes long term. An INFJ in this situation is overly very perfectionistic. They are overall people who are sometimes either too perfectionistic or they are blissful fools. You could call this fourth subtype the blissful fool subtype. Because eventually at nine, an INFJ can get to the point where they start blocking out their vision entirely. Pretending it isn't there and deciding nobody will listen anyway, so whatever. An INFJ in this form are tuned out of their passion and their best form of self. And overall they are not acting towards a higher cause. So this subtype can often be portrayed as evil. INFJs in this subtype are often folks ESTPs. They pretend to be more cocky, more arrogant, more hardcore, more real and more concrete than they actually are. And this can look very unhealthy. These uh, ESTPs actually do not look like normal ESTPs. They don't seem happy about life. They don't seem to be in a good state of mind. They seem angry. They seem restless. They seem to be struggling. And this is an, uh, the truth. An INFJ in this subtype is struggling. But still, if this influence becomes permanent, because it can be either temporary or permanent, uh, it can last for five minutes, it can last for five hours, it can last for five years. It all depends on how this strong this grip becomes. Releasing yourself from a long-term grip of extroverted sensing can be very difficult. First, recognizing that you are in this situation to begin with is something these types tend to struggle with. Still, 
it's an important part of growth and of becoming more happy. You often fall into this subtype because you've lost belief in your passion and what, and what you love. You started to think it doesn't matter, but it matters to you. If you are interested in becoming happy, no matter what other people will think, no matter what the situation thinks, consider your habits, consider who you are at your best and try to find your way back to being the person that you would love to be, that you envision yourself being the, the person that you feel best being. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this a little longer video. It took some time to explain this. If you have any questions about the INFJ subtypes, leave them down below. And of course, subscribe and share if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching.